Over the past 20 years, I have spent thousands on kitchenware. I kid you not. And if I could go back and talk to my younger self, I would tell myself to start with just these 10 things and then maybe go from there. But honestly, if I had to start over, I would definitely just get these basic things and not fall for all those gadgets and gizmos that I really didn't need and ended up donating, to be honest with you. First, I would buy some pots and pans that can stand the test of time and can be used from the stovetop to the oven with ease. I have bought so many non-stick items and just pots and pans that were very inexpensive and just did not last, causing me to spend more money over time. So I definitely recommend starting with a good stainless steel pan or pot set or just one of each, uh, a bigger size would be better, something that can withstand oven temperatures of up to 500 degrees. And if you need non-stick, just get one that isn't going to break the bank because they're not going to last to be honest they just get scratched and obviously you can't use them once they get scratched because no matter how careful you are that coating will come off over time you can see from this drawer that i have an array of uh you know knives and gadgets and things but one of my favorites is this avocado slicer it has been used over the years quite a bit. I have two because I use it that often. But this is surprising because not only is it inexpensive and lasts quite a while. I know it's plastic. It's not like, you know, the most amazing um, expensive tool to have on hand, but it does keep me from getting injuries from getting a seed out of an avocado. I did get an injury from doing that and had to get some stitches. So I definitely recommend getting this. It saves me on bills from the doctor, to be honest with you, and uh, just makes it a a lot easier because I can slice an avocado in half, get the pit out without getting any kind of injury, throw that in the trash, and then use this bottom part to slice really easily or use the top part to get the uh, you know meat out of the avocado. So definitely recommend getting one of these. I think it's around 10 or $15, but definitely worth the money. Next, let's talk about mason jars. And this might not be a huge surprise because obviously you can use these for canning, but that was what I bought them for and I have not gone around to doing that yet. However, that's not what I use these for right now. First of all, this one with the narrow mouth on top, this is one of my favorite drinking glasses. It is just great for a homemade lemonade or a nice refreshing drink, but also I use it to dry my straws. We have a lot of straws in this house and also as a handy kitchen storage container. I also use this one with the straight edge here and a wide mouth. And this one, you can actually freeze this with leftovers in it because it's got the straight sides. Just make sure you leave room in the top there. You can get these awesome plastic lids. You can buy them from Amazon, Walmart. I've seen them at Winco, all kinds of places. And they make them for both sizes, for both the narrow and the wide mouth lids. What I also like to do is maybe slice up some strawberries or you've probably seen that hack where you can just wash them and throw them in a mason jar, put a lid on and they last longer. You can make overnight oats or any kind of individual meals that you wanna have for later. They're just really great versatile tools to have in the kitchen. This next tool I wanna to talk about is my food saver. And obviously it's a little bit of an investment. You may be able to get it for around $100 or so at Costco. A lot of times around Black Friday, that's when you'll find the best deal on this kind of thing. When meats go on sale like ground beef or chicken, I will buy about 10 pounds separate it into smaller portions and then use my food saver here to just vacuum seal. And it keeps everything really nice and fresh for months and months. There's not gonna be any freezer burn. And my favorite part about these little bags is that when you freeze it, you can actually take the plastic right off and really, really easily it doesn't get stuck and just put it in the microwave to defrost. It's one of the best machines I've ever owned. All of my food stays super fresh and it helps me uh, not waste. So I love this thing. My next favorite tool is probably not gonna surprise a lot of you. It is my Instant Pot. Now the thing with the Instant Pot though that you might not know is that you can slow cook in this Instant Pot. I actually went ahead and bought this glass lid from Amazon for around $10. So that way I could see what's inside while slow cooking. But you don't need to do that. You can just use a regular lid that it comes with. And you can see that there's a slow cooker option. And if you can find a model like the Instant Pot Duo, like this one, you can make rice, yogurt, you can saute in this as well. So a lot of recipes call for maybe sauteing some onions and garlic first before throwing them in the slow cooker. You don't need to use a separate pan or pot for that. You can just do it all in here. So that's one reason why I love this because you can use it for so many different things. It does not take up a ton of space. The insert inside the stainless steel one here is washable in the dishwasher. 
dishwasher. Also in the summertime, it's great to use the Instant Pot when you don't want to heat up the entire house by turning on the oven or the stove. So definitely a money saver there when you don't have to turn on the air conditioning to compete with the hot oven. So just a really great budget friendly tool for the kitchen. Next on my list would be a nice sharp knife. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a very expensive knife set. Just keeping a good quality sharp knife on hand can help avoid injuries and make cooking and prepping a lot faster and easier. I, for years, kept dull knives on hand, and I have no idea why, but it's just a great idea for both safety and efficiency to have a nice, sharp knife. Doesn't have to be super expensive. Cuisinart, Emerald Lugasi, and other brands make good quality knives as well. Just keep a honing rod on hand to make sure that you can keep them sharper for longer. Plus, avoid putting them in the dishwasher. Always hand wash. Hand wash them right away, so that way they don't get rusty and can stay sharper longer and last a lot longer as well. Next, I would highly recommend getting a kitchen scale. Now, I did not know I was going to be needing one of these when I first started out, but over time while making bread and baking and just generally measuring things out, I find that measuring things with grams or ounces is a lot more efficient and accurate and will get me better results in the kitchen. And it really doesn't cost very much, less than $20 usually for one of these, and it really makes things a lot easier. You don't have to use a bunch of of measuring spoons and measuring cups and making more dishes. It's just one simple tool to kind of eliminate a lot of other tools in the kitchen and really just ends with a great result in the kitchen as far as cooking goes. One of the simplest products that I never would have recommended to myself in the earlier days is a wood cutting board. Why? Because it's a little bit more expensive than the plastic counterparts. However, wood is naturally antimicrobial and will last longer. The plastic, as it gets cut from knives and from usage over time, just harbors all the bacteria. And then you just have to throw it away because obviously you can't use it at that point. And then you just end up spending more money over time. So a good quality wood cutting board or even just a less expensive one made out of bamboo or acacia, but any of those cutting boards will do. You do not have to spend a ton of money on one. I personally love booze block, but I also like Farberware. So really you can find a great cutting board at any price. And that one is one of my huge kitchen staples that I use every single day without fail. With wood, again, you just have to take a little bit of extra care. Just hand wash it right away after you use it. And once in a while, it may need just a little bit of food grade mineral oil spread onto it and just let that soak in so that way it can last longer. But really, it does not take a whole lot of maintenance. I cannot tell you how many times I overcooked food before I had one of these little things on hand. Just a very simple, inexpensive thermometer, whether it be digital or analog, it doesn't make a difference. I prefer digital because it's a little bit faster. I also have candy thermometers on hand too for other projects. I love to make homemade candy around the holidays, but just having these things on hand makes a huge difference in not wasting food and making sure everything tastes really good. The 10th thing, which I think is probably the most important thing really, is to have a good set of spices and try to avoid buying one of those sets that you see on Amazon or at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond that just include all of these random spices that you don't even know you're gonna use. I recommend just going to a place like Aldi or Walmart and getting a couple of spices for a dollar each and trying them and seeing if you love them first before buying a large container, maybe at Costco or Sam's Club. But having the spices on hand really makes a huge difference in cooking, not just using salt and pepper, but discovering new flavors and seasonings that you love to really make your food taste incredible. By no means am I recommending going out and buying all these things in this video today, but if you're looking to minimize and thinking about what you should keep on hand, definitely consider this list. And if you're starting your kitchen from scratch, I definitely recommend getting these items first and then building from there. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.